Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video we will upgrade a dying hard drive of this 2007 first generation Apple TV. The first generation Apple TV actually uses a standard 2.5 inch notebook IDE hard drive. So there are many options out there to upgrade these drives. We could replace it with a larger and newer IDE hard drive, an IDE SSD, IDE to SATA adapter and a SATA SSD, etc. I actually opted for a IDE to SD card adapter and a 128GB SD card. Let's start by disassembling the Apple TV. For this we first have to peel the rubber bottom off. This can be a bit tricky if the bottom has never been removed. I have removed mine many times and actually ran the Apple TV without it for the last few years. After that we need to remove the four Torx T8 screws on the bottom. Be careful to keep track of where the screws came from since there are different lengths. Lift off the metal bottom case but be careful since the hard drive is still attached to this side. Now disconnect the IDE ribbon cable by pulling straight up on this blue pull tab. While we are in here, we can have a look at the insides of the first Apple TV. Here we can see the 48 watt internal power supply plugging in over here to the main board. This is the IDE port on the main board for our new hard drive replacement. Here we have the Apple TV's Wi-Fi cord in a mini PCIe socket. That's the case fan. This doesn't actually cool the CPU or GPU directly, since they are located on the other side of the PCB. Now put the Apple TV to the side, since we need to remove the hard drives from the bottom case now. For this unscrew these four Torx T8 screws. After that we only need to pull out the IDE cable from the drive, preferably without bending the pins like I did. Since the drive is now removed, we can install our IDE to SD card adapter. I will use a 128GB SD card, since a 32GB card I tried didn't work. The smallest capacity Apple TV was 40GB, so storage media smaller than 40GB might not work. Now we have to plug the adapter into the end of the IDE cable that does not have the blue pull tab on it. To shield this from shorting out on the mainboard or the metal case, I put some folded paper around it. Plastic would probably be better. If you used an adapter with screw holes or a IDE drive that can be screwed in like the original drive, you don't need to do this. After plugging the other side of the cable back into the mainboard, we can close the Apple TV again. This side with the elevated part here goes on the back and has to be slid in first like so. Now we only need to screw the four T8 screws back in. The short ones go on the back where the ports are and the longer ones on the front. The last step is to put the grey rubber bottom back on. Now that the new drive is installed, we need to restore the original operating system of the Apple TV. For this we need to use a USB stick with more than 1GB of storage. First download the restore image file from the description. It's remarkable that this website still hosts those image files. They even appear to be answering questions. The next step is different depending on the operating system on your computer. For macOS you can use Apple Pie Baker, under Linux you could use DD, Windows users might use Win32 Disk Imager. Regardless of the tool used, you should end up with a USB stick that has the restore image on it. Now back to the Apple TV. Power off the Apple TV and insert your USB stick into the USB port on the back. Connect the Apple TV to your TV and power it on. Press and hold the menu and plus or up button on your remote as soon as you see the orange light on the front of the Apple TV. As soon as your USB stick stops blinking or as soon as you can see something on the screen, you can stop pressing the buttons. 
When you see this screen, you've done it correctly. If not, just unplug the Apple TV and try it again. The Apple TV now copies the files from the USB stick to do a factory reset. This will take some time and the Apple TV will reboot once. Now use the remote to select Factory Reset and press the middle button on the remote to confirm. Next, select Restore and wait until the Apple TV reboots again. The Apple TV will now restore its operating system, which will take up to 10 minutes. After the reboot, you have to select your language, connect to a network and you have a restored Apple TV. This intro always gives me the chills. You don't see something like that on a modern Apple TV, do you? Now you're done, hooray! With the Apple TV OS installed, you can use the video in the card to install Linux on it to make it a bit more usable. Or just use it as is. Anyways, if you liked this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.